Welcome to A Healthy Curiosity, the podcast that explores what it takes to be well in a busy world. With self-care strategies from Chinese medicine, functional medicine, Ayurveda, neuroscience, and beyond. I'm your host, Brody Welch, a licensed acupuncturist and transformation catalyst, here to support you on your journey of health, happiness, and personal evolution. Hello, friends, and thank you so much for tuning in today. It is a true pleasure to get to share this time with you. One of the things that brings me the most joy in in life, really, is seeing someone who's come into my acupuncture clinic in pain leave without pain. Or when people get off the table and they say things like, I could tie my shoes, whereas I couldn't before, or I could reach my arm over my head to put my shirt on. It's not hurting to walk down the hall and put weight on my ankle. Acupuncture is powerful, lasting medicine for a wide variety of painful conditions that limit mobility. And I frankly want the world to know it. Acupuncture does not have like a giant marketing team extolling its virtues and how effective it is, but it's something that I believe that truly would make the world a better place if everyone knew about. Today's episode is for you if you have a body, because likely at some point we all run into something painful, or if you know somebody who's living with a painful condition that's getting in the way of their ability to really do what they love and get the most out of their lives. We're going to be getting into why acupuncture should be the treatment of choice for a wide variety of conditions involving muscles, joints, tendons. We'll hopefully talk a bit about how it works from a biomedical perspective and why this is. And first, a little background about today's guest, too. I'm I'm super excited to be talking to. As I record this today, it's early April. We're just a few weeks out from the two-year anniversary of when the world changed. And I've been doing a lot of reflecting about just how much has changed since the pre-pandemic days, even just within my practice of acupuncture. On March 14th, 2020, if we can rewind there, I was all excited to head to San Diego for this hands-on workshop on how to treat musculoskeletal conditions of the upper extremities with this teacher who I'd been hearing great things about from some respected colleagues. And it was literally that week that I internalized the meaning of what it is to go viral. Like I went to bed with my bags packed for the trip and woke up, saw the news, realized that this COVID situation was moving head spinningly fast and just kind of got the idea that like, okay, the world could be shutting down. The schools could be closing, probably not the time to get on a plane. So I missed out on this, on this live in-person learning experience that I've been looking forward to. But fortunately, this same teacher has this vast library of webinars available online And since I had to close my clinic for a few months, I had plenty of time to dive into learning new things. So I have spent a lot of time with the virtual version of Dr. Anthony Lombardi over the past couple of years in between bouts of grief and existential angst over COVID. But I continue to do so through his online membership community for practitioners, which is an awesome learning place to be, really inspiring. After being in practice as my 19th year of practice, it is really helpful to have a place that never fails to fire me up and get me excited and inspired to keep learning even more. So I really wanted to have Anthony on the show because I wanted all my patients to understand why getting acupuncture is absolutely the best thing they could be doing for themselves, especially for pain conditions, but also kind of like why people should bother who might be on the fence, why they should invest in a treatment series. And for acupuncturists to hopefully have this be a resource for for why your patients to help them understand a bit more about what's going on when they are on your table. Dr. Anthony Lombardi is a 2002 graduate of New York Chiropractic College and McMaster Contemporary Medical Acupuncture Program in Hamilton, Ontario. Yeah, you heard that right. He is a chiropractor, but he's been practicing acupuncture for 19 years. Upon graduation, he founded Hamilton Back Clinic, and since then, he has become a private consultant to athletes in the NFL, CFL, and NHL. Over the past 19 years, Anthony has given over 100,000 acupuncture treatments, so he's got a lot of experience. In addition to practicing, he was an instructor, the Contemporary Medical Acupuncture Program at McMaster University from 2004 to 2013. He developed his signature XDOOR system, which he currently teaches along with motor points and electroacupuncture to physicians and practitioners all around the world. And he's got this membership community, of which I am an enthusiastic member, but I am not in any way getting paid for this podcast. Dr. Anthony Lombardi, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Brody. I really appreciate you having me here. Uh, That was quite the introduction. Thank you. 
You're welcome. So I'm really curious about your journey. You're a chiropractor, and yet you seem to spend the bulk of your time and energy practicing and teaching about acupuncture, whereas chiropractors typically get good results, right? Like, I'd love to hear how you got to be the acupuncture enthusiast that you are today. Well, the story that really changed it for me actually goes back to chiropractic school. It was 2002. I was at New York Chiropractic College doing my internship. And one day we had an acupuncturist come in. Actually, he was a TCM acupuncturist and then later went back to school to become a medical doctor. And with him was a chiropractor who went to New York Chiropractic College and said to me, Anthony, you should come in and listen to this presentation. And I was fully intending to do so. And then I finished with the patient and I think they kind of ran behind. And I said, you know what? I think I'm just going to go go back to my apartment in Buffalo. So I went to use the restroom and on the way out, I was about to go out the door. The chiropractor who was also there with the TCM acupuncture said, Hey, where are you going? And I'm like, Oh, geez, I guess I have to stay now. So I stayed. And in it was the presentation about acupuncture. And the reason why, this is the reason why I didn't want to stay because back then the NIH had a book, the National Institute of Health. And this book had graded all of the different therapies available for back pain. So chiropractic, physical therapy, acupuncture, and it gave it a grade. And so what they did was this manual graded acupuncture, they gave it a D, a D as in dog. So a a low grade for back pain. So my thinking was, why would I even consider acupuncture that has such a poor score among the research? So forget it. It seems like a waste of time. So I stayed. And in this presentation, at the time I had a shoulder problem, I was working out and I hadn't worked out in about three weeks. And they asked, does anyone here want to be a volunteer? And I put up my hand and I went there. And after one visit, of was motor point acupuncture. It was some soft tissue work. And this visit lasted 20 minutes maximum. I felt a a whole lot better to the point where I went back to the gym the next day and I was lifting more weight than I was before I got injured. And at that point I said, where do I sign? And that was the turning point. So the joke is among some of my colleagues is that my weak bladder is the reason why I got into acupuncture because had I not went to the restroom first, I would have just been (laughs) out the door. And yeah, imagine how different life would be. (laughs) That's amazing. So you got this tremendous result firsthand in your body. And then, and that was it. You fell in love. That was, you were were sold. That, That was it. At that point, I realized if I could make these changes in the musculoskeletal arena that quickly, I needed acupuncture to do it because chiropractic helps. It definitely does. But the advantage that acupuncture gives, it gives you the ability to circumvent things like neurosensitivity, a tight muscle, muscle tenderness. Using things like motor points can essentially hit the control alt delete or that reset button that manipulation can't or deep tissue massage can't. And when you're able to do that, the patient instantly has increased range of motion and increased strength. And those two things together create the wow factor. The patient says, oh my goodness, just like I had with me, oh my goodness, I'm so much stronger than I was. And that's the, not that we're selling anything, but they're going to buy anything you're selling if you can demonstrate those types of results. So I was really excited by that. You've used the word motor points a couple of times. And I'd like just for, for people listening who might not be familiar, is that different than a typical acupuncture point? There is, I know that not all, well, certainly not all acupuncture points are motor points, but there is a substantial number of motor points that are in fact, traditional acupuncture points. But for the sake of this conversation, I'd love for you to define what a motor point is. Exactly. So a motor point is the point where a motor nerve, a nerve that moves a muscle, actually attaches or supplies the muscle. So for example, motor points are always found in the belly of the muscle. So it's in the center of gravity of that muscle itself. So it can equally contract it. And so when that nerve attaches to the muscle, it's that junction at which 
the contraction takes place. Now, if the muscle is injured, you have inflammation, you have noxious stimuli that decrease the potency of that junction to function. So when we talk about a muscle being shut off or inhibited, that motor point is not working optimally. It's working, it's just not working at 100%. So when we test that muscle, it'll appear weak, but it, it'll just be inhibited more often than not. So that's why patients who maybe just had surgery, they feel like they're doing their physical therapy exercises, but they don't feel like they're getting any stronger. It's like the ability of the body of the, to, to communicate through the nervous system to tell the muscle to contract and to do it well, isn't working very well. Do I have that right? That's exactly right. And there's three things that cause muscles to shut off. One is pain. One is trauma or repetitive trauma. So surgery falls under the trauma because anything that cuts into the tissue will cause the motor nerve to work suboptimally or the motor point. It's and trauma. We just, just trauma we yes. plan for that we, <laughs> that we hope will oh. eventually have a better result. But yeah, if somebody's recovering, it's like that is essentially helping them recover from trauma. Yeah. And of course, if somebody like the makes sense that if it, if a place is in pain, the body is going to suggest you not use it <laughs> until it's healed. Exactly. And then the last thing that causes muscles to shut off is changes in the joint. So changes in the joint. And according to the research, this is something as mild as mild osteoarthritis in the knee. And then that happens naturally over time. So a lot of people, in fact, are walking around not knowing that their muscular system is inhibited. And this is more significant in athletes, people who want the best performance out of their bodies. And that's why a lot of my patients are athletes who are not symptomatic, who are people who just want to perform better, whether it's in gymnastics, tennis, team sports, a lot of marathoners. So there's a lot of benefits that the acupuncture can provide to do things that are more than just relieving pain. Oh yeah. Getting people from, from living their lives to optimizing, like that must be really rewarding to see. I, I don't, I don't work with a lot of performance oriented folks, but there are plenty of people who feel like they're in this vicious cycle of it hurts. Therefore I'm not using it as much and I'm not using it as much. And therefore it's getting more stiff and sore. And so like helping people break that cycle and get back out into the garden or back to the gym or back to play, playing with their grandkids or whatever it is that it's, uh, it's such a great interrupt. So that's is. why you would use a motor point is essentially it, it takes down inflammation it increases the range of motion, decreases pain. Right. So yeah, the, yeah. the two main things that the motor point will do is increase the range of motion and increase strength. Awesome. And if you can do that, you will, as a byproduct, decrease pain and decrease inflammation. I feel the need to circle back to that book that graded acupuncture so lowly is, do you right? think they would have updated that result in light of the research that shows that even poorly performed acupuncture outperforms the standard of care? <laughs> so, you know, the interesting thing is, is that the thing is, and I have a webinar about this, a free webinar about research, how research can be interpreted to benefit the institution that's printing it. Yes. Because there's so many questions like, what's the quality of the study? Uh, you know, what was the skill set of the people performing the acupuncture? What were the outcomes? So you don't know that when you're a student, right? Mm -hmm. I just, I assumed that was gospel. Yep. It, it, and I remember telling a teacher that, say, well, it's not, it doesn't work. And, and they were like, and it was a teacher at New York Chiropractic College, a chiropractor who also practiced acupuncture. And he was like, what are you talking about? It works amazing. I'm like, not according to this book. And he's right. like, I don't care what that book says. <laughs> right. We got it. We always have to question the sources and, uh, and follow the funding. Really good lesson. So, yes. okay. So motor points. And I remember just like as an acupuncturist, it's like, we have a couple of maps in our heads. When we look at, at a patient, we see the anatomical map of origins and insertions of muscles, like where everything connects and where the, where the anatomical landmarks are. And then I, I'm, I'm assuming that this is fairly typical if you practice acupuncture, that you also see kind of a map of where the points are, right? Where, where the acupuncture points are. Learning the motor points, it's like, it was, was like having this other layer 
overlaid on my map of points. And so it was sort of like in the beginning, just kind of like putting on new glasses and having the places that some of them, as I said, overlap with acupuncture points, some of them don't. And being able to have these kind of like uh, these new spots on the map to to go to in order to see if they would get results. And and frankly, just the the speed at which watching things change to me was was super impressive. Like, so I was just, just with you noticing that being impressed that wow factor with how fast a muscle might go from testing weak to testing strong, just with even, you know, a few minutes of, of attention to a motor point. It's instant. It's instant because at that point it's, it's essentially a reset button. I use the term reset. If you ever had to, let's say reset, um, a fuse panel, or I use control alt delete for the, you know, the, the PC, it really is that simple because the electricity of the body, the, the nerves, which is the the electrical circuits, they work at blazing speed and the acupuncture itself directly neuromodulates. So that's the term we use neuromodulates that particular region and adding when we do motor points it can be just with the dry needle itself or just the, with the acupuncture needle but we usually add a low level electric stimulation and that amplifies the effect and literally within seconds it totally changes the function and strength of the muscle and in many times if the problem is a mechanical problem there's very few other problems going on with the patient that stimulation will make improvements that will last weeks awesome but let's talk about that for a second because a lot of times people like for example i am usually booked out for a while in my clinic i don't let people make one appointment i encourage them to make a series because i won't have room for them if they're if they just make one appointment because even if they get some instantaneous result that's probably not enough to actually shift the pattern in a way that it will be long lasting could you speak to to the the idea of like why doesn't it just hold forever like what why do we need more than one treatment and 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 what do you what do you usually say to people who are coming in with with pain obviously every case is different and and you, you give people a report of findings after you've worked with them but but in general it's like why do why do people need a handful of visits at least well a big reason is based on the length of time that they've had the injury so the longer they've had the injury for the longer they've had the pain the longer their body has been forced to what's called maladapt so it's adaptation with mal in front of it maladaptation so they're using tissues and muscles that aren't designed to compensate and they're doing it for longer periods of time so these tissues start to absorb inflammation from the nerve it's called neurogenic inflammation and these muscles tend to start to stick together and they form nodules or tight bands things that we may know as trigger points and these trigger points of course these tight nodule these tight bands are very hypersensitive so someone comes into the office with pain and changes in the soft tissue i refer to them as trophic changes so changes in the topography or the landscape of the muscle so instantly in visit one we can increase the range of motion we can increase the strength but the topography those trigger points that absorption of adhesions that is accumulated through maladaptations that takes time. Yeah. So when so when people are coming in, they they've maybe they've been sitting at a desk for 20 years, not exactly. moving very much, and they've got those rock hard shoulders, and you touch them and you just feel like, okay, this is now a rock and it needs to feel more like human tissue. And we just need to melt this ice. And it's gonna take a while with the sun shining on the on the glacier in order for it to turn back into water. It's it is the kind of thing where that consistency it will get there. And I, that's, that is such a cool thing when people start to recognize like, oh yeah, like I can actually touch my shoulder and there's give there now, as opposed to this, this armoring that even people who without trained hands can feel. Most definitely. Most definitely. 
You brought up electroacupuncture and, and I'm curious, I, I want to circle back on that because it, it makes so much sense to me, right? If, if acupuncture is working on the bioelectricity of who we are, like that's the first, the first paradigm shift I encourage people to think about is like, stop thinking of yourself in the world of Newtonian physics of your body as a machine and start thinking of yourself as this field of energy, like quantum physics. And we're going to just talk to the, to the empty space and we're going to talk to, we're going to talk to the energy energy bit as opposed to the matter bit. And it's just flipping your thinking. And a lot more is possible when we think of ourselves as this bioenergetic field that we can we can put a little suggestion in and the body takes the hint. So it makes sense to me that adding electricity to a bioelectric field might might give it that much more of a of a jolt. Can you speak to kind of like what is happening that that just plain old acupuncture isn't doing? So when we're adding the electricity to the motor point, we are creating an involuntary contraction of that muscle. And so when we do that, a few things happen. One, that electricity is stimulating not only the muscle itself, but the sensory fibers that are located in the tendons that are located in the motor unit of the muscle itself. One thing is called the muscle spindle, which has a coil of sensory nerve around it, which determines length and contraction of the muscle. And remember what happens is when you have all this noxious stimuli, the pain, the muscle tightness creates this neurogenic inflammation. And what that does, it pollutes the motor fibers of the nerve. What the electroacupuncture does, it creates a contraction that is at the level that the muscle by itself cannot do because of inhibition. And that breaks the cycle of the hold that this noxious stimuli has over that motor nerve that has been under this, this duress. And like you said, it's the biomechanical gap that's filled that restores the action potential of that particular nerve. So it resets it, even if it is for a very short time. Because in some patients who, when you have a lot of injury, let's say it's a muscle tear, that tear will continually release the neurogenic inflammation that'll cause the muscle to shut off. But the benefit to that is it gives us what I call a window of opportunity for that window of opportunity allows increased range of motion that I can use to use more acupuncture or soft tissue work or gua sha to break up all of those adhesions without having the reflexive pain stopping me or stopping the patient from allowing me to do it. A healthy curiosity turned five years old in July, 2021. And I want to express some heartfelt gratitude for you for listening, for sharing the show, for your ratings and reviews, and for being a fellow giver who cares about your health and personal evolution. This show would not exist without you. To celebrate, I've put out a virtual tip jar. If this show has inspired you, encouraged you, or taught you something over the past five years, you're invited to leave me a tip. Head to the show notes and click on the link to the tip jar or head to brodywelch.com forward slash product forward slash tip jar, all one word. Your gratitude made visible will totally make my day. Now back to the show. That image of when you've got neural inflammation, that neurogenic inflammation, that image of pollution kind of spewing out of the nerve, it's like there's there's literally chemicals going into the body that are sticky and that are making the tissues stick together and causing those strobing yes. changes. So that I, I just feel like that's such a, and so I'm, I'm imagining that like with the electroacupuncture causing a contraction that basically it's like, okay, so there's, there's pollution, there's noise, the water isn't clear, the body isn't able to tell the, the muscle what to do and to make it function in, in an optimal way. And we're going in there and we're, we're stimulating it and kind of like reminding it who it is and, and what it's about as a muscle. Yes. And, and I <laughs> like, this is your purpose in life. Remember, yeah, I, I, I prefer the term yeah. neuromodulate. So neuromodulate, it's, yeah. it, it's just, it's just to return to homeostasis. Mm -hmm. It's getting them back on the back on track. 
And of course, of course, if just like anything, it's it's the the dosage and and not the the medication, so to speak, that makes the difference. It's not the electricity, it's the frequency and the the dosage. Because if we had the wrong frequency, we could create a negative experience. We could create pain or noxious stimulus. So again, like anything else, it has to be the the correct dosage. But yes, it can make tremendous changes when applied. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. It stru- different structures in the body have different densities and they're going to respond to different frequencies for sure. I'm curious, like to, to just give this, to put this into concrete terms for people out there listening, what kinds of conditions are we talking about here where you feel like acupuncture and specifically using motor points and using electroacupuncture might be the treatment of choice for, for that person? Well, I have a long list, um, acute low back pain, acute neck pain, like torticollis, any type of acute ankle injury, patients who receive acupuncture within first 24 hours of uh, an ankle sprain, they decrease their rehabilitation by three or four weeks. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, any type of arthritic joint you can have an instant improvement. Say say that again, arthritic joints. It's amazing to me how many people limit themselves when I ask about pain and they say, oh, well, it's arthritis as though there's nothing you can do about arthritis. Oh, right. I mean, arthritis itself is is an aging process. And and in fact, if the arthritis is there, it's there, but definitely with electroacupuncture, the research has shown we can slow it down. We can also, there's research showing that we can also help rebuild intra-articular cartilage to a certain point. And definitely we can help with the extraction of adaptive potential from that joint. What that means is you have a joint, it's arthritic, but what the acupuncture can do in part with some manual work, some gua sha, some soft tissue release is maximize the potential of that joint and its surrounding muscles. Sure, the arthritis is there, but because the muscles around it more so are inhibited in a certain respect, there's a lot that they can do to improve the function without a doubt. Post-surgery also helps, post-joint replacement. Those are some awesome examples. And, and just to underscore that, just the power of, I think, getting acupuncture for an arthritic, I can't even tell you how many people were, that I've treated who were scheduled for knee surgery because they had quote unquote bone on bone and six treatments there they were life changing for them and have canceled surgeries and realized that they might need a tune up every once in a while, but it's the kind of thing where we're just helping the body's ability to adapt that extracting that adaptive capacity is many times enough to, to be really game changing for people. So I always want people to know, like, just like whatever, whatever your images say, whatever the labels are, it doesn't necessarily have to be predictive about how you feel in your body. Definitely. Without a doubt. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about this system that you came up with called X store. And for like, first of all, like what was missing from your, from what you were doing before that X store adds and just kind of like, if you can kind of describe the process a little bit so people can maybe imagine what it's like, because I essentially, I, people who've been into my clinic, who it's, it really changed the way that I assess and therefore treat when I'm doing musculoskeletal stuff. So could you um, give us a, a little bit of the origin story of X store and walk us through it? Exactly. So I started practicing at the uh, end of 2002 and I started using x or created it, we'll say 2010. So this is what was happening between 2002 and 2010. Patient comes in with an injury. I go through range of motion. I didn't have really a concrete plan of what I was doing. And many practitioners are like this, by the way, they'll go through the range of motion, they'll palpate and they'll use any pertinent orthopedic tests on, on the area. And then from there, what I was doing, and I had to reflect upon this, what was I doing? I was using therapeutic approaches that I used in the past for similar conditions. So let me give you an example. Patient comes in with neck and shoulder pain. I would go through this limited assessment. And then what I would do is use a therapy 
that I did in the past. I would put a couple of needles here, a couple of needles there. I would do some soft tissue and I would get good results or I would get favorable results. So then I would use that same treatment on the next patient that came in that had similar symptoms. The problem with that is that you get to a point where something that looks similar is not similar. So you're applying these treatments and the patient isn't responding and you're asking yourself why. So at that point, your efficacy, your success rate is like 60%, right? Which isn't terrible, but I was unhappy with it, you know, because essentially what was I doing? I was guessing. I was saying, well, it looks like this and you're kind of hoping so I started to incorporate a system and I had a lot of mentors and I would watch what they did and everyone did things a bit differently. And I'm a systems kind of person, a systems guy. And I want to see, is there a way I can streamline it to be consistent, not just to save time, but to be consistent because what XDOR does, it doesn't just save time. It reallocates time. So instead of spending 10, 12 minutes on assessment with XDOR. It's a choreographed assessment where I just spend two minutes on assessment. And this time I spent on the initial history gives me all the information I need and tells me what isn't working and what needs to be corrected. So now I then spend more time on treatment. So instead of the treatment being 30 minutes long and 30 minutes was the history and the assessment. Now in 30 minutes, I have the history, I have the assessment, and I've begun the first treatment. And so it really compartmentalized everything. And what was happening is I was getting outstanding results because I was finding what muscles, what extra is, you find what muscles aren't working and you correct it. And when you correct it using the motor point, all of a sudden you have that increased range of motion, the increased strength, and you can use other electroacupuncture approaches to break up all that dense tissue, the trigger points, the tight bands. And so what was happening, they weren't just getting better in terms of movement and strength, pain was decreasing, their measurables were decreasing, decrease pain, medication consumption, better sleep, and so on and so forth. So that was the road that brought me to it. And so after I created in 2011, I started teaching the classes, which was only about one a year because it was just myself out of of my office. And then as time passed, I met some uh, Joshua Swart and he introduced me to traditional uh, TCM acupuncturist. He said, hey, we could really use this to help improve the outcomes of the MSK, the musculoskeletal injuries that that traditional acupuncturists use, and I said, "Well, that's a great idea." And then that you know that brings us to now, you know, minus a pandemic. I think that's what I really appreciate about it because, like you, I I've been in practice getting used to getting pretty good results, but being confused as like, oh, this this case looked a whole lot like this case that I had like five years ago, but this isn't responding in the same way, and and it matters to me because I actually care, you know, like we we as practitioners, like we we really uh, if we're if we're in it for the right reasons, we really care about our patients and the difference between getting a result for them or not, it's like it weighs heavy on my heart, you know, and so having, being able to, to have something that feels a little more comprehensive of like, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Is there, is there some muscle that's not doing its job and that's why you're compensating in this way, or that's why we're hitting this roadblock, you know, and, and being able to, that's what I found like X store has been really useful for is um, instead of treating kind of like tending to the victims and the perpetrators in the body, as opposed to just the thing that might be like screaming the loudest, but that isn't necessarily causing the problem. Exactly. And the other thing that XTOR does, and then this has evolved in the last, let's say five or six years is the importance of the history taking, because there's something I talk about is when you have a problem presented in front of you, it is either mechanical or it's a chronic systemic problem. And that's really important because a mechanical problem would be, for example, a flat tire on my car. So I replace the tire or I put air in it and all of a sudden it's running better. A chronic systemic problem on my car would be if I put diesel in my gasoline engine. 
then that diesel circulates to all parts of the engine and affects all parts it comes in contact with. So when you have someone with inflammatory arthritis like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, and they have a mechanical problem and you don't recognize that they might have a chronic systemic illness, or you don't ask the right questions or recognize the signs and you treat it as mechanical, what happens is you don't get a positive result. In fact, sometimes you get even a greater negative result in a flare-up. But if you recognize it right off the get-go, and it's extremely easy to recognize it within three or four questions, which is probably a couple of minutes, then it puts you on the right track and puts the patient on the right track. So that's the great thing about XDOR. It's not just the physical assessment, but it also puts you in the best position possible to get the best possible results. Absolutely. Well, and for those of us who are also herbalists who work with chronic systemic conditions like autoimmune diseases or chronic latent viruses or whatever, it's that there may be other tools that we can implement that are really going to help that person. Definitely. Definitely. Helps us get there faster. So I'm wondering if there is just for people out there listening, whose curiosity might be piqued, what's the experience like of getting this kind of a treatment? What, what is, what is the patient experience? What can they expect? In a mechanical problem, they can expect outstanding results within the visits one or two. Usually patients who come in, they see my goal is to get out is to blow them away on the first visit. Yeah, yeah. In fact, that's where the majority of the the wow factor comes in. Yeah, so paint us a picture. Like what's actually happening? If the person comes in, you talk to them, you or you you get their assessment, they've answered some questions, and then you start by doing this muscle assessment. Correct. So I've got their intake form, I've reviewed it, it tells me anything significant that I need to know. I take the history point and streamline questions to determine if it's a mechanical problem or not. If it's mechanical, 90% of the time, 85% of the time it is, I go through the XDOR. So the XDOR scan, what's involved is an upper and lower extremity scan. So the muscles part of the scan are responsible that, that I test for is muscles that attach to the girdle. So the scapular girdle in the upper extremity and the spine and in the lower extremity, the muscles go from the pelvic girdle to the spine. So when I'm testing the muscles, I'm testing the extremities ability to stabilize itself relative to its spinal attachment. So what I do is I go through a scan of five or six muscles on the upper extremity and the same in the lower extremity. So essentially to the patient, it seems like a muscle test. I hold it up. I say, I'm going to press down, you push up or don't let me move you. And they push up and I meet their resistance. And if they can meet my resistance, then that's a muscle test. Then it's, it's fine. It's not uh, significant. What happens is when it meets my resistance and it can't hold me, then that would be considered inhibited. So I, I mark that down. So after I go through this scan of the range of motion and the muscle tests on the upper and lower extremity, let's say I have a list of three muscles that are shut off. What I do at that point is with the electroacupuncture, with the motor point, I go to those specific muscles and I switch those muscles on. And that takes approximately, let's say a minute on each muscle maximum. You know, if you're learning, it's going to take a little bit longer. And then I retest and the patient who saw how weak they were beforehand now see the differences are, wow, that's crazy. That is so good. They feel so much stronger. And I tell them, I preface that and say, no, look, you're not just going to be strong for uh, 10 minutes. You're going to be strong for weeks and weeks. And it's true. And then what I explained to them at that time is how the process works. I say, look, usually I'll see patients a couple times a week for three weeks and reassess. We're going to use some electroacupuncture, some soft tissue work. And within that first visit, what I'll do then is I'll use other electroacupuncture techniques to work on the tight bands. And I'll have them on the electroacupuncture with a little bit of low level stimulation. It's usually a, a box called an Edo or a Pantheon. And I'll keep them on for 10 or 12 minutes. I'll leave the room in the meantime and just have them relax. And it's a, 
the lights are dim. I have some classical music or whatever music they prefer. Sometimes they, 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 uh, I ask them what they like and sometimes they'll tell me and I'll be able to pull it up. And I give them a little bell, which is a safety bell. So if they have pain or need to use the washroom, they ring it. And then I go into the next room and tend to that patient. And then I come back 12 minutes later, I de-needle them and I do some soft tissue work. And then I retest. And by this time, they're feeling amazing because they have great range of motion. They're noticing they went from weak to strong. And uh, I'll see them again in a couple of days. And, and I'll see them initially a couple of times a week, much like how you run your practice for about three weeks, about six visits off the uh, off the top uh, initially. And and that's I I really appreciate you painting that picture for us because I think a lot of times people just that just that it's mystifying like what's going to happen to me in this process and so right. helping people kind of see their way clear what does it feel like how do you explain because I I know that the the pointer plus the 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 thing that delivers the electricity to to reset the the muscles can be kind of an intense experience but it's not necessarily a painful one and I'm just curious like how do you explain what to expect to a patient. That's, that's a, a great question. What I tell the patient, you're going to feel a little bit of a, of a pulse or the muscle is going to move by itself. So it, it's Which like is that weird, it's, right? Like we're, yeah. we're, we definitely have not had that experience with <laughs> until this. And so it's like, I usually tell people like, this is going to be weird, but you know, so, but yeah, you're, yes. so you're telling them, okay, the muscle's going to move by itself. You're going to feel a yeah. pulse. Uh huh. Yeah. It's a fluttering. They're going to feel mm-hmm. a flutter. That's, that's the best way flutter. to, to great word. describe it. All right, yeah, awesome. so they feel the flutter, and and then many times, of course, you'll have people that are apprehensive. But after they feel it, they're like, "Oh, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't bad." So, of course, I always, you know, temper it. If if the patient is really, really nervous, then I won't introduce the electricity right away. You know, I'll just use acupuncture without it, right? Because in the first visit is a great opportunity to make an impression, and you don't want them to come away with an experience that they don't like because that sets you back. Uh, It's sometimes hard to recover from it if you recover at all. Right. We can't help people who don't show up for their next visit. And so even though we're not like a spa service, right, it's not about just everything feeling like relaxing and lovely all the time. It's it's also, it shouldn't be unpleasant. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and actually with this kind of work, if I, if I understand correctly, if it's painful, it's counterproductive. That's correct. So when I teach and when I explain it, when I explain it to practitioners, what we're doing with the electroacupuncture is creating a non noxious stimulus. When I explain it to patients, what I want you to do is I say, I want you to feel the pulse and the flutter, but I don't want it to be painful. And sometimes the patient says, oh, but, but I can take it. I, I can, can take, take it. it. I'm tough. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you can take it because if you're feeling pain, that means we're releasing the inflammation and that's sticking the muscles together. So we don't want to elicit that. We don't want to summon neurogenic inflammation. We want non-painful stimulus. Awesome. Well, this has been such an awesome introduction to the world of motor points and electroacupuncture and and the XDOR system. Is there anything else that you want people to to really understand about any of these topics that we've covered today? I think the biggest thing that people who practice acupuncture fail to understand is the absolute gift that first of all, they have to have learned it and the power that it possesses to do so much good in the musculoskeletal arena. And people say, what are you talking about? You're just putting needles in. But if you do it right, and, and you understand that to do it right, to follow a system is not as difficult as it sounds. We can make some outstanding changes in people's lives in our own practices and revive our practices or improve the function of our practices, but realize that it is a true gift. And I might add, it is the best treatment available for musculoskeletal pain. The ability the acupuncture needle has to decrease pain, improve muscle function, there is no other treatment that does it as effectively and as quickly. So hopefully keep that in mind if you're listening and uh, realize that 
that you're on the right track. Yeah. So when people, um, when, when I'm working on people's backs and I find something that feels like a tight band and they think I need to go get a massage, <laughs> that's where, that's where I'm busting out this quote, acupuncture, <laughs> Ac- yeah, like you won't do. need that massage. You, this is, we're treating it right now yeah. anyway. Um, and while massage is a lovely thing and I used to be a massage therapist and I love massage therapists and, and all of that, it's, there's so much more long lasting power that an acupuncture needle can bring. Very much so. And, you know, having said that, if they have the massage, I would uh, make sure they have acupuncture before, because otherwise they won't be able to, to get the maximum benefit of that massage. Really true. Timing, timing is everything. Dr. Anthony Lombardi, this has been such an awesome conversation. I really appreciated you and your time. I will have links in the show notes about where people can learn more if they want to connect with you. But if you want, if you just want to put out there uh, the best way for people to reach out, if they have been inspired by this conversation and they want to connect, how should they do that? Thank you. Pretty simple. Just go to www.dranthonylombardi.com. Or That's dr can, anthony lombardi right dr yeah. uh-huh. anthony lombardi.com mm-hmm. or uh, if they like to email me they can email me at xstore that's e x s t o r e at usa like the country.com thank you so much thank you for having me this was an absolute pleasure thank you so much brody thanks for listening today to check out the show notes get on my email list or drop me a line head to brodywelch.com. That's Brody with an I-E and Welch with a C-H. I'd love to hear from you. If you learned something new or feel inspired to try something different in your life, I'd love for you to pay it forward by sharing this episode with a friend who you think could also benefit and give them a reason to listen. You'll be helping to create a world where we encourage each other to embody self-respect. Till next time, be good to yourself.